When we measure things, our values aren't always exactly accurate. And so it can be important for us to tell how far off we were. This is a value called error. And we'll talk about how to calculate this in this lesson. In the previous lesson, we looked at uh, groups that were trying to measure a distance that was exactly 500.0 feet long. And one group did a number of trials where they came up with these three values for the length of this distance, all of which were off by a little bit. So let's see how, the, how we'll calculate error of each one of these measurements. Error here is defined as the measured value minus the actual value. It's not a particularly tricky equation. So let's go right ahead and look at this, uh, this first number that we have here. So 503.5 feet minus, that's our measured value, minus the actual value, which was 500.0 feet, is going to give us 3.5 feet as our error. So for each one of these trials, we can indicate an error. 3.5, this was 3.5 higher than the actual value. So we often indicate whether we were a little bit above or a little bit below by using a plus or minus sign. So this error is going to be plus 3.5 feet for this measurement. Okay? For the second measurement, once again, 502.8 feet minus 500.0 feet is going to give us an error of 2.8 feet. And this is a positive number. We are 2.8 feet above the actual. So plus 2.8. Now finally for our last trial here, 497.4 feet minus 500.0 feet is going to give us in this case negative 2.6 feet. And so again we'll say minus 2.6 feet to indicate that we lowballed it a little bit there. That this number here, 497.4, was lower than the actual value of 500.0 feet. So here we've expressed our various errors associated with this measurement. Error can be a good thing to know, but often what's really, really useful is to know how much we should care about the error. Here's what I mean. Let's say we do some measurements, we compare them to the actual value, um, and then we, uh, we calculate the error, okay? Let's say the error comes out to be 1,000 feet. You might think, wow, you know, we were really off. That was a really big error. But hey, what if the distance that we were measuring was a million feet? In that case, an error of 1,000 feet being 1,000 feet off isn't that big of a deal. Now, on the other hand, let's say that we had an error of 10 feet. That might not really sound like a big deal at all, but what if what we're trying to measure is 100 feet or 200 feet? Then those 10 feet become pretty significant, and we were very, very off from the actual value. So instead of just calculating error, we also often want to calculate something called percent error. And what percent error does is percent error gives us an idea of how big our error is compared to the size of uh, what we were actually measuring. So basically, is it a big deal? Should we worry about it or not? So percent error can be described as the, and the absolute value of the error divided by the actual value times 100%. Let's look at the percent errors for a couple of these trials here. So right here, we had an error of 3.5 feet. And we'll divide that by the actual value, which was 500.0 feet. Remember that this is the actual value. Sometimes people make the mistake of taking 3.5 and dividing it by 503.5. Don't do that. It's 3.5 divided by the actual. And then we'll multiply that by 100%. The final answer that we're going to get is 0.7%. That's the percent error. We're off by 0.7%. So that's not really a huge number. OK, let's look at this next one, the error that we get for the third situation here. Now the error here was minus 2.6. We're a little bit below the actual value. But remember, for percent error, we want to calculate the absolute value of the error. So with absolute value, we always make it positive. So it's going to be 2.6 feet. Don't worry that it's negative because it's absolute value. Divide it again by the actual value, which is 500.0 feet. We're going to multiply that by 100%. And the answer that that's going to give us 
is going to be uh, 0.52% there. If you're a little bit worried about the significant figures here, keep in mind that 100% is part of the definition, it's part of the equation. So we don't have to worry about significant figures here. Now, percent error we've looked at for these different trials for the measurement of something that was uh, 50, 500 feet. Let's take the same error, 3.5 feet, and imagine that we were trying to measure something that was only 17 feet and we ended up with an error of 3.5. In that case, we do 3.5 feet divided by 17 feet and multiply that by 100%. In that case, our error is much bigger. It's going to be 21%. That's huge. Now, the reason why is because 3.5 is a much bigger part of 7 than 3.5 was of 500. But I did this example to show you what I was talking about earlier that 3.5 feet might be a large percentage error or a small percentage error depending on the size of what we're measuring in the first place. That's why percent error is useful. It tells us, should we worry about it? 0.7%? Not really. 21%? Yeah, we should. That's a really bad error. That's way too much. Now, there are a few ways to write the equation for percent error. We looked earlier at the equation for error, measured value uh, minus actual value, and then percent error. We can also put these two equations together in one big equation for percent error, where we take the absolute value of the measured value minus the actual value, and then divide it by the actual value, and multiply that by 100. As you'll see, this is just the combination of these two. Error is this, so we're just taking this guy here and putting it on top of the actual value and that's how we get the third equation. But I just tell you this because I don't want you to be confused if you see the definition of percent error being this very large equation that you haven't seen before.